Hello everyone, uh, today we're going to talk about prolonging the life of your budget AR-15s. Okay, so uh, first a quick summary and then we're going to go into the details. Okay, so uh, four items. Okay, uh, number one, having multiple ARs that you can rotate uh, as they start getting hot. Okay, heat is a gun killer. All right, so as the guns start getting hot, you rotate them. Okay, uh, number two, uh, shooting slower ammunition. Uh, that basically heats up the guns at a slow rate. Okay, uh, now you know, especially if you're going to be doing uh, close drills, or, right? If you, drills at close range at CQB distance, you don't need super hot ammunition. Okay, uh, so if you're able to do the drills with uh, slower ammunition, that will also prolong the life of your gun. Okay, uh, number three, having extra gun parts. Okay, so if the gun breaks because guns are machines, no machines sooner or later break. If you don't have extra parts, the gun's dead, okay? Uh, if you do have the extra parts, well, you fix the gun and you keep working, okay? Uh, number four, having uh, buffer weights of, of different sizes, right, to, uh, to basically match up to the ammunition uh, that, that, that you're going to be shooting. So uh, budget ARs are typically overgassed, okay, uh, which is fine if you're shooting slow ammunition, okay? Uh, but if you start shooting, you know, uh, faster ammunition, hotter ammunition to those budget guns, the guns can beat, can start beating themselves up. If you have a heavier buffer weight that you can put in, you know, it'll cushion it a little bit more. And again, it will prolong the life of your AR. Okay. So, uh, that's the summary. And now we're going to get into it and talk about it in detail. Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about prolonging the life of your budget AR-15s. Okay, so uh, this video um, comes out of the comments that I received uh, in another video that I did uh, that was raising the question of, you know, should you be getting uh, budget AR-15s or premium AR-15s? Okay, that, that was the title of the video. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Um, so in that video, I told you that uh, you're better off getting a budget AR-15 or multiple budget AR-15s, okay, and putting more of your money into ammunition, okay, um, and optics, okay. Uh, so that that was my my thoughts on that video, and you know, you, again, you guys should check out the video. I was basically saying you're better off practicing more. You'll in the long run you'll be better with a cheaper gun that you practice more and you're a better shooter with, right, uh, than having a, a premium gun that you really can't afford to shoot. Um, or you don't want to shoot because it's your good gun and you don't want to wear it out. So um, I don't monetize any of my channels. I don't get freebies from any of the uh, uh, manufacturers or distributors. Uh, I only make money from training people. And most of the people that I train, you know, they're just budget people, right? They're not like... Uh, uh, they're not like uh, super rich people. Okay, so most people are really happy when I tell them that now they don't have to spend a whole lot of money on a rifle. About there was a, a comment that came out of that video, and I've heard it before. It's not the first time I heard this uh, comment that when people do in, in some of the training classes, right, uh, where a lot of times it's like a two or three day class uh, where people are shooting like fifteen hundred to two thousand rounds. Um, one of the comments that I've heard and I've heard it before is that, uh, a lot of the, uh, you know, the budget rifles, a lot of times will fail. Okay. Um, now I've also heard from other places, right? Uh, it's usually not the same person saying it, but from other places that even the Gucci brands also fail. Okay. Uh, so the question becomes, okay, why do failures occur? in those type of classes where they're shooting 1,500 rounds to 2,000 rounds over the course of two or three days. And the number one reason is heat, okay? Uh, heat basically damages guns, right? Um, so, so one of the things that I have done to prolong the life of my rifles uh, is I don't get them, I don't let them get so hot that I can't hold them, okay? So a lot of times, especially with these railed rifles, They'll get so hot uh, that, you know, you can't hold them. And people, because they got gloves on, they'll keep shooting throughout that. 
once this gets to the point where it's too hot to hold, okay, um, you're, you're, you started wearing your gun down uh, at an increased rate, okay? So uh, to prolong the life of the gun, regardless whether it is a budget gun or a premium gun, okay, don't let the gun get too hot, okay? At least don't let it get so hot that you can't hold it with your bare fist. Now, if you are in a situation where you have to wear gloves because, you know, you know, there's just a rough environment, you don't want to be, get cut up, you're climbing up over berms and shit, you know? Um, you know, there's ways to, you know, get a sense of how hot your rifle is getting. Okay? Um, now, uh, you know, one of the things that I do, okay, and I think it makes all the sense is, if I'm doing um, if I'm doing a training session where I expect the rifle is going to get hot, okay, I have multiple rifles that I rotate, okay. Uh, so as soon as one rifle gets so hot that I can't hold it, or the person that's shooting it can't hold it, uh, or I see smoke starting to come off of it, right, I rotate it, all right. So I don't let I don't let the guns get too hot, and that applies to all of my guns, right? Uh, to my AKs, uh, to my to my uh, um, AK shotguns, okay, um, you know, they all do very high round counts, and I always, and I have multiple rifles of almost the exact same thing, and I rotate them so that they don't get too hot, okay, now, the other thing that I will do if I'm doing a, if I'm going to a class or a training session, uh, where I suspect that there's going to be a very high round count, uh, in addition to bringing extra rifles, okay, uh, I will bring extra parts that are likely to break, okay? Um, so, what, what parts are this? The, the, one of the, uh, there's, there's three things that are likely to, to break, okay? One of them is the, the trigger groups on ARs. Now, when those go, right, and it, most AR triggers are rated for about 5,000 rounds, even though I'll usually get 8,000, 8, approaching 10,000 rounds on it, what will usually happen is one of two things, and I know because it's happened Numerous times to me over the course of 15 years I've been training people. Um, it will either uh, lock up, right, uh, so that, you know, the, the, the trigger's not working, um, and, it, you know, it's just not working, or it will go full Monty. You're going to start getting uh, multiple round bursts. This usually has to do with the disconnector wearing out. I've seen it a bunch of times. Um, if your trigger is locking up, okay, uh, the thing to do is if you put it on safe and take it off safe, it will usually unlock it. Okay. So I know the solution because I've been through it. Okay. Uh, now that either way, whether you're doing like getting, and it's usually never more than a two or three round burst. Okay. It's not like it just dumps the whole magazine. You might, you might get like a double burst or something. That's not what I would consider a catastrophic failure. If you know what to do with it, uh, let's say in the case where it locks up, just put the safety on and off. You can keep shooting the gun. It, you'll be able to, you know, you'll be actually be able to get uh, through that that particular training session. You'll be able to get to the break so that you can change out the trigger, okay? And the triggers on these things are very easy to change out. Uh, so I'm going to a training class. Uh, I will I will typically um, have at least one extra trigger group, okay? If I'm expecting to shoot like 2,000 rounds over the course of two days or something, I will definitely bring an extra trigger group. I will also bring an extra bolt carrier group, okay? I still have them in the packages. I should pull one out and show you guys, but I still have them in the packages. I will have an extra bolt carrier group, but um, the, here's the thing. You don't actually need the entire bolt carrier. You just need the bolt itself with an extra firing pin because uh, those the parts that are likely to break are either going to be in the bolt, like let's say an extractor, uh, or the gas rings make whatever. If the gas rings go, it will usually still... It'll still run, but you may get, you know, you'll start seeing failures to lock back. Uh, you might see, you know, cycling problems, but that's not a catastrophic failure. You can work through that, okay? Um, so gas rings are not a problem. Extractor is a problem, okay? A broken firing pin. Now, an interesting thing with the broken firing pin is that because the, run, the firing pin runs in the channel, I have seen firing pins broke not just in one spot, but in three, in three, in two spots, right? So you, I, the firing pin is actually uh three pieces okay because it's running in a channel inside of the bolt it will still work so there's plenty of times where i did not know that i had a broken firing pin until i went to actually clean the gun and when i took the firing pin out i saw it was broken okay so in most cases the fire a firing pin break will not be catastrophic 
unless the, the, the tip that protrudes past the bolt, right, that hits the primer, unless that specific part breaks, uh, because if, if that breaks there, yeah, it's not going to work. So, uh, in the in the grip over here, right, what I will usually have is I'll have an extra bolt, I'll have an extra firing pin, okay, and I'll usually have an extra uh, an extra Allen key for the optics, right, uh, and also an extra battery, okay. I'll keep that in the in the grip compartment here, and what I'll do is I'll put like some paper in there or something so things don't rattle around if I need to, okay. Um, so so that goes in the grip, okay. So these ar-15s are built to be lightweight guns okay um they're not built to be indestructible um you know you they can be built indestructible but they will be much more he much heavier and much bulkier so because they're built to be lightweight guns uh they do break when you're running up very high round counts very quickly where you're heating up the gun okay the heat is really what does the most of the damage to the guns and for that reason like i said the way I prolong the life of my guns is that I have multiple guns, okay? Um, now, if you're going to one of these classes, right, because you might say, hey, how practical is it to, you know, in real life to be going around with two guns? Okay? Well, this is the thing. If you're going to a, a training class where you're going to bring 2,000 rounds of ammunition, right? Okay, you got 1,000 here. Each of these is about 22 to 23 pounds. Okay, I got almost 50 pounds here. If I'm bringing this heavy shit... Right, right. If I'm bringing all that shit, that heavy shit, right? I got it's like 75 pounds on this table and 75 pounds on that table. You know, I got about 6,000 rounds right here on this table. Okay, if I'm bringing all this shit, I can afford to bring an extra gun or two or three. Okay, um, you know, certainly a shorty, right? You know, a lightweight shorty. Okay, uh, a ten and a half inch. You know, if you're gonna, if you're going someplace where you're gonna have more than six mags, right? Uh, because, like, I think, like, your your standard, let's say your military loadout would be something like 220 rounds or 240 rounds, okay? If you are expecting to shoot more than that, okay, uh, you bet, you, I, I would think that you would have more than just one gun, okay? So so that's just the, the practical way to, to think about it, okay? Um, yeah, if you're going lightweight where you only got five or six mags, yeah, it makes sense. You're only going to have one gun, and the pistol is a backup, okay? That's a practical situation. If you're going someplace, and it doesn't matter whether it's uh, uh, a training class or a real SHTF type of scenario, you know, you're going out to the hills or something to hide or into a bunker or something, if, if that's the scenario where you're taking all this ammo, right, and 2,000 rounds, like I said, it's all this 2,000 rounds over here, right? This is what you're going to take to your training class. That's almost 50 pounds, okay? I'm going to take that much weight, I can definitely afford to take two extra guns, three, you know, three extra guns, okay? It's not a big deal, man, you know, if I'm bringing that much ammunition, okay? Uh, so that's just a, um, a, a practical way to, to think about it, which I think is proportional, okay? I mean, if you're, yeah, if you're going to, sh if you're going shooting and, you're, and you are only taking six mags with you, right? That's, you know, the, uh, the most amount of shooting that you expect to do, yeah, you're going to have... You're gonna have your, your rifle, you're gonna have your pistol, you're gonna have you know your six mags, and you're gonna have maybe two extra uh pistol mags, okay? So so you gotta keep things in in, in perspective like that. Um so that that's how I prolong the life so the life of my guns. Uh I don't let them heat up, okay? I don't let them heat up to the point where I can't where I can't hold them. Uh and if I'm gonna be shooting that much where they are heating up, I just I rotate the guns and and you know, again, I explained the situation where if you think that it's not practical to have multiple guns to, 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 to rotate, well, it's not practical to have 6,000 rounds with you, okay, either, all right? So, so we got to be a little bit, you know, you know I, 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 like, I like keeping things in, in perspective like that, okay? Um, now, aside from having multiple guns, rotating them, um, having uh, the extra parts, that are likely to break, okay? And again, the extra parts are, uh, again, with, with, with the trigger breaking, I usually, it's usually not catastrophic. Uh, you know, it's usually, it just starts locking up or doing a two round burst, so that's not catastrophic, okay? Uh, the, your extractor breaking, that, that'll be catastrophic. I mean, the gun's just not gonna be extracting it. I mean, so you gotta have an extra bolt in the grip, okay? Uh, might as well have an extra firing pin in there. Might as well have an extra battery in there. 
Might as well have an extra Allen key for you out there, okay? Um, the other thing that does break is the charging handle, okay? These things are, are flimsy. I don't care what company you get them from. Um, they, they, you know, over, you know, this is one of the things that over thousands, like, we're always charging with two fingers. That's going to stress it less. If you're charging like this, that tends to torque it to one side. The other, the, the, the point there is that in my gun bag, okay, I, I always keep an extra charging handle because, again, I recognize that as as something that that can break it um now uh as far as the other there's also another uh failure that i have seen although it's not catastrophic the gun will still work uh a lot of times this is something i showed back in like 2016 uh you know 2015 2016 right this is when like you had you know hillary was going to become president right and there was she was gonna everybody was you know she was gonna ban everything she probably would have right um, if she had, if she had won and, you know, had an opportunity to pick three additional judges on Supreme Court, it would be a completely different world right now. Um, so back in 2015, uh, there was a, a huge, you know, basically a, people were buying ARs as fast as they could be made. Companies were rushing to pump them out. And I think a lot of companies were working, um, with the foresight that, hey, they would probably be out of business within a year or two. Okay, I, I think a lot of companies were going into that, with that into it with that mindset, uh, especially the the smaller companies, and they were just pu uh, pushing out the guns. Um, the The main issue that I saw with some of the guns that they were rushing out, okay, was the uh, the gas tubes were not being properly secured. Okay, I, I think that you know you're supposed to not use lock type i think it's like rock set you're supposed to put uh some type of a uh of a thread locker um on the screws of the uh however the, I, remember, I i don't i don't I, I i usually don't put uppers together but i think there's a screw in there you're supposed to put some type of uh uh thread locker on the screws that hold the the that connect the uh the gas the the gas block and the gas tube um i've only had to do it once uh, to repair it, okay, and I think that was because they were being rushed out. And what happens if 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 the gun gets hot, right? The first time it gets hot, if it has not, if the, if the gas tube has not been properly attached to the gas block, the two will separate, and now you have essentially a bolt action rifle. Where every time you fire this, you know you got to charge it in order to chamber, okay? Um, so I did see this in two thousand. 15 2016 uh have not seen it have not seen it uh since i'm sure it's happened but i haven't seen it uh but that's a real thing it, that the good thing about that is that uh it's it's uh it's easy enough to fix yourself in a house if that if that happens okay? and it's not a big thing it's just a matter of getting the rail off and and, and getting the the rock set and and you know getting that gas tube and the gas block connected okay? So it's not that big of a deal, but it, it, it will stop your gun from running. And again, the, the quick, fast solution to that uh, is just to have another gun, okay? Move to another gun, okay? So the, the fastest replacement for a broken gun is another gun, right? So that's why if the rifle breaks, we, go, we immediately go to our pistol. Uh, and then if we have time, we get to another rifle, okay? Um, so again, in, a, in an SHTF type of situation, um, when you're if you're on the run presumably you're gonna have you're not gonna have you know it's, unless, you know, it's very unlikely that you're gonna have a thousand rounds on you okay um so and if you, you know in that type of crazy world type of situation uh chances are that if you're not killed you'll be doing lots of battlefield pickups okay so getting more rifles is not gonna be you know no you know there's no way of knowing how shtf uh, would pan out okay uh, so there's lots of different possibilities a lot of times uh, people are preparing for just one possibility okay uh, you've got some guys that might be just preparing for the sniper long range shooting only possibility with a some type of a bolt gun right you know uh, or thinking that shtf is going to be if they can hunt that's the end of it um you know you got other guys that might be preparing for a um it's all going to be very close pistol distance so all they need a pistol is a pistol 
Um, you know, there's other guys that might think that they're going to be getting into these like long drawn out shootouts, right? Where they're going to, ha- you know, there's actually going to be like a thousand rounds going back and forth. Okay. Uh, I-, I think that, you know, like I said, like I said, a-, a number of people in different, not just in my channel, but in multiple channels in the comments, uh, a lot of times we'll point out to these classes where they're doing 2000 rounds over the course of two days. Uh, and it will say, hey, you know, this gun failed and that gun failed or all the guns failed. Okay. Um, so, so, you know, and, and I'm sure that all guns, all brands will fail. Okay. If, if you, if you run them hard and hard enough, long enough, okay, they, they, they'll all fail in some way or another because again, ARs are intended to be lightweight guns. Okay. Um, so, you know, the type of scenario that that is, I guess fantasizing uh, is basically like uh, you're, you're on Okinawa or something in World War II and you're being overrun by like, you know, you got like thousands of Japanese trying to overrun you, okay? That's the scenario that you're really training for uh, if you're going to these classes where you're, you know, shooting out, you know, 2,000 rounds within a day or two, okay? Uh, which is, again, first of all, it's fun. There's no reason not to do it, okay? Uh, but I'm just saying that that is one possible scenario okay out of many other possible scenarios okay so uh my suggestion is don't just get so don't get so locked into just one scenario okay uh the more in my opinion the more likely scenario is uh that the hshtf right would be would involve actually very low round counts uh because uh, most of the people that are out looting right are looking for easy targets okay uh they're not looking to get into a long drawn out gun battle uh, especially at a time where there's no medical treatment okay uh so i think that the i think i don't know but i think the possibility of of these long drawn out thousand run thousand round gun battles is less of a possibility than 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 more of a possibility okay um i think that the more likely scenario is that you're going to you know you're going to want to arm multiple members of your family right even if they're untrained now at that even if they hate guns now in that type of scenario they're going to learn to like guns really fast all right because they're going to realize that's you know that's the, their best chance of of surviving okay um and being safe okay so so even people that don't may not like guns now that are biased against guns are going to you know their, their their feelings are going to change really quickly uh, and it might be in your interest at that particular moment to arm those people so you want to have extra guns to, to to arm those people uh and and get them to help you right and you want to have extra ammunition uh which is why on this table over here right i've got one two three four five boxes of tula and wolf steel case right and i've got one box of brass x tax okay uh now this isn't the full extent of the ammunition that I have, right? Uh, this is just what I felt like I could, uh, you know, what I felt like putting on this table, and I and I was kind of worried about how much weight this table could take. <laughs> uh, so that was my mindset with how much ammo to put on the table. So my point here is that um, I, I I I'm a big believer in having lots of cheap ammunition because a lot of your engagements are going to be at at closer distances. Uh, you can have, let's say three magazines full of your steel case ammo, uh, and then you can have one or two magazines full of your brass ammo, okay, which you can use for, for, for longer engagements. The one thing to be careful of with the steel case ammunition, especially the 223, is uh, if your chamber does get hot, you don't want to leave it in your chamber, right? Because what, well, a lot of times what, what, what it will do is it'll, it'll get stuck in there uh, if, it, if, if, if it sits in a hot chamber, okay? Um, what you want to do is if you're done shooting, right, uh, you want to empty that chamber, lock the bolt open, right, you know, um, and, and you, know, you know, empty the chamber, lock the bolt open. Uh, you can, you're only going to eject one round, right, which you can, are able to collect. You got your safety on. If you want to, if you need to re-engage, all you got to do is slap the, you know, slap the bolt release and it's going to put the next round in. Uh, but while the bolt is open, your chamber's cooling down. Okay, so that's how I would handle that with the steel case, uh, which does have a tendency, right, where if, if you have a hot chamber 
and you chamber around, you let it sit in there, you're gonna find yourself needing a rod to push it out. Okay, I know because I've done this stuff. Okay, I, you know this is the kind of stuff I do. Um, so that's what happens. Again, you know I don't want the gun to get so hot that I cannot touch it uh, because now that's really starting to uh, uh, to escalate the uh, uh, the amount of wear on your barrel. Okay. Now another interesting thing that's worth knowing as far as saving your barrel life. Um, one of the reasons why I use steel case, right? Uh, it's it's actually running at a slower velocity, uh, and because it's going at a slower velocity, it actually wears down your barrel slower. Okay, uh, just like uh, for example, uh, if you compare 6.5 Creedmoor and 308, okay, 308 ammunition, which is going at a slower velocity, is like two to three times has a two to three times longer barrel life. Okay. Uh, 6.5 Creedmoor has a much shorter barrel, barrel life. Uh, there's different figures out there. A lot of people will quote have, that a 6.5 Creedmoor has a one-third barrel life uh, versus a 308. Okay, um, so uh, so that's probably the reason why you know I did a video. I was able to get uh, 22,000 rounds out of my Radical AR-15, right? Because 95% of that. Uh, which was was steel case ammunition. Okay, now during the course of that, I had to probably I think I changed the trigger twice, right? Uh, I probably only needed to probably change the disconnector, but I just changed the whole thing. Um, so I had to change the, the, the trigger group twice, okay? And I had to change, I had to make repairs to the bolt uh, twice, okay? Now because uh, because a radical had a lifetime warranty. What I did is I just sent a picture to Radical uh, with the serial number and the broken bolt. And they sent me a, like a, a brand new uh, bolt carrier group. So I got a full bolt carrier group replacement under their lifetime warranty. Okay, Because they didn't want to take a chance of just fixing one part, but maybe some, you know, they just changed the whole bolt carrier group. So again, another reason why I'm, I'm a big uh, supporter of uh, budget guns that have lifetime warranties okay and right now the only ones that i know of there's probably more out there is uh is palmetto uh and uh and radical firearms and i've actually executed on on their warranty on um, each of them okay i had the radical firearms they replaced the, uh the entire gun except the lower except the receiver the part with, with the serial number that kept the same and then on palmetto they gave me a brand new upper okay they changed out the upper on that sent it back to palmetto and they sent me a brand new upper okay so i mean that's what you get out of these budget companies that have the lifetime warranty so i've, I've actually executed on them they're good all right it's it, it's good stuff okay um oh so what, what i was trying to say before is that the the, the steel case stuff it, it runs at a slightly slower velocity okay so uh just to give you on a 16 inch barrel right uh, I will get, I think, uh, 865 foot pounds. Okay. Uh, compared to when I put the 62 grain green tips in there, which are on the hot side, those get about 1150. Okay. So 865, uh, steel case versus, uh, 1150, you know, uh, green tips. Right. And again, I'm talking about the energy, they're not the velocity, uh, just because that's, those are the numbers I happen to remember. So because the, 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 the Tula and the Wolf is less hot, uh, the bullets are going slower through the barrel. It, you know, the barrel doesn't heat up as much. That's probably the reason why I got 22,000 rounds where, you know, other people will say, oh, the barrel life, uh, you know, is, it should be a lot less than that. Okay. So I'm running mostly slower ammunition and I don't let the guns heat up. Okay. Uh, the military quote on barrel life is usually, usually around 6,000 rounds. Okay. Uh, but uh, that's, you know, in many cases are doing select fire. Okay, so again, you can see the difference in running hotter ammunition, running the ammunition more rapidly, heating up the barrel. I get 22,000 rounds. The military says they get 6,000 rounds. Okay, now I don't know how how far back that goes. I actually remember that from a few years ago. I don't know if that goes back a year. Or I don't know if that data was from a, from from that year or from 10 years earlier. I I don't know. But that's the information I, I had seen and I remember. Okay? So shooting more steel case will also save on your barrel life. Um, shoot the brass too, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, especially if you're doing shoot, if, if I'm doing distance shooting, yeah, I'll shoot, I'll shoot uh, uh, more expensive stuff. So 
uh, I ha I'll have my steel case for shooting 30 yards. I'll usually shoot like my my budget brass from let's say 100 yards out to maybe 300 yards or 100 to maybe 200 yards, okay? And then from 200 yards plus, I start using the, the more expensive uh, stuff. I'm, if I'm shooting like out to 500 yards, you know, I'll try to use 77 grain, you know, the uh, uh, the real match grade ammunition that's expensive. Okay? So, so I'm selective with what ammunition I use, where I use it, how fast I shoot it. Again, that all prolongs the the life of the uh, of the gun. Okay, um, and I think that covers it. Okay, so uh, there's my thoughts now. Oh, another thing I will do. Okay, uh, I started doing this in 2020. Okay, uh, another thing I will do is for a lot of the training, especially that's up close, 30 yards and in, I will use uh, AR9s. Okay. Uh, AR9s do the same thing that AR15s do, with the exception that mines don't have a last round bolt hold open. Okay, um, and again, the the also the the, the if I want to um, do like um, jamming drills, okay, if I want to induce jams, that's not the same with an AR9 as it is with a 5.56. Five, uh, so yeah, I still need to do practice with 5.56, five, five, but a lot of the stuff like the up drills, right? You know, like first of all, just working with your sling, right? Getting people to get in there, learn how to use a, a fast loop sling, right? You know, if they want to do a max change, loosen this up, you know, stuff like that, you know, get on target, you know. This is all stuff you can do with an AR9, okay? You know, from here, turn around, come up, get on target. Okay, so that's that. all that stuff you can practice with an AR9, okay? So AR9, cheaper ammunition, but it's also going a lot slower, okay? So again, the the AR9s because the bullets are going slow through the barrel, you're also going to get a lot more um, uh, a, a lot more life out of your gun. Okay, so these are all things that I do. Uh, these are my suggestions. Drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, I wanted to talk uh, about one more thing, and that's with regards to budget guns typically being over gassed okay and they do it on purpose because they want to make sure that the gun will work with the budget ammunition the wolf and the tula and whatever other crap that we normally get on on discount okay uh so they need to make sure that the gun will work with that this ammunition usually runs at a slightly lower velocity uh it has less pressure so if the gun's not over gassed it may not work with that okay um and the mentality of much of the gun community right is that if it doesn't if it doesn't work with a uh, steel case it doesn't deserve brass okay so manufacturers have heard this and in most cases they make sure it will work with steel case okay um so the issue here is that if if, if you're going to shoot lots of hot ammunition through it like if you're going to shoot lots of green tips if you're going to shoot uh lots of like 77 grain stuff Okay, and I'm not talking about 50 or 100 rounds. For that, I, I, I you know, I, I, I just shoot it the way it is. It's not a big deal. But if I'm going to shoot the hot stuff exclusively, okay, since I know that these guns are over gas, I got a whole bag here of, of buffer weights, okay? These are all buffer weights. H1s, H2s, H3s, yeah, three ounces, three and a half ounces, four ounces, four and a half ounces, okay, five ounces. I got, you know, um, it's a, whole, a whole bag of buffer weights. So what I will do is if I'm, plan to sh do a lot of shooting uh, with with hot ammunition, I will put in a heavier buffer weight, okay? And I, the ideal place for for your ejection pattern, right, if I'm shooting this way, is for it to shoot at 3 o'clock, okay? Uh, now, the problem with that is if the gun gets dirty, you, it starts falling back towards 4 o'clock, you know, you might start having some cycling problems, you may not be locking back on the last round. So rather than you know, I, I prefer my guns ejecting at two o'clock, right? This way I have some margin as the gun gets dirtier, it'll start ejecting at three o'clock. So I like them at two o'clock. If you're ejecting at like one o'clock, you're, you're probably like over gassed. Uh, so I would put in a heavier buffer weight. So that's, that's, I mean, so buffer weights are really easy to change. Okay, so I, I don't think there's, you know, there's that much effort uh, in changing a buffer weight if you know you're gonna be, you know, going through a thousand, two thousand rounds of of, of uh, higher pressure uh, ammunition okay um most of 90 percent of the ammo that i shoot you know inside of 50 yards i just shoot with steel case the three ounce buffer weights that are, that are in there are fine if i'm going to do a lot of shooting with the heavier stuff yeah i just, just put in the heavier buffer weight okay so that's so that will prolong 
uh, the life of your gun. The gun will beat itself up. Um, uh, it'll, it'll beat itself up a lot less. Now, over the years, I have seen a couple of extreme cases, usually around the time of buying panics, okay? Like 2015, uh, 2000, you know, 2020, all right? Uh, during buying panics where their manufacturers, all manufacturers, all brand names, they're rushing to get the guns out, right? Um, uh, occasionally what I'll see is I will see a gun that is way, way over gas that you can't just correct with a buffer weight where it's actually either ripping the cases in half or ripping the rims off of them, okay? So that's a situation where the, that gun needs to go back to the manufacturer, okay? So if you get a brand new gun, I tell people don't just throw it in the closet and forget about it. Get it to the range, test it, make sure it's working. If it's your first gun, go with somebody that, that has some experience with AR-15s and have, have them help you test it. Um, and if the gun isn't working right, you know, get a prepaid uh, shipping label and you send it back to the, to, the, to the seller and they send you a replacement. Okay, so that's really easy stuff with Palmetto. In fact, uh, this one over here, um, uh, the one with the stainless steel barrel, when I, the, 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 I, I, this, I bought this as just the upper. When I got it, there was some kind of a scratch or something on the, on the paint. Not a big deal. didn't affect functionality. But I said, you know what? A brand new gun. What the hell, man? I'm going to make you send me another gun. Okay? So I sent them an email. They sent me a prepaid label. Sent the gun in. They sent me another one. Okay? So easy stuff. No big deal. I mean, the gun's got plenty of scratches on it now, right? Because I've been, I've been using it for over a year now. Uh, but the point is, right, that, that, that you know, with these... Um, with, the, with, with these budget ARs, uh, especially you get them from places that have lifetime warranties, get it from places where, you know, it's an easy return exchange, okay, uh, if there's anything wrong with the gun, okay? So that's that to me is like, you know, because I've been through it, I've seen it, you know, and, and certainly if I'm recommending to one of my customers to buy a gun from somewhere, I want to make sure that there's an, an easy uh, return policy. Uh, or at least exchange policy, right, where they can get a, a working gun, okay? So, uh, especially if, it, if you're buying a gun during a buying panic, okay, uh, yeah, definitely get it from someplace that will, like, exchange it if it's not, like, perfect, okay? So, uh, that's it. Drop some comments. I'll talk to you all soon.